I have the feeling that at this moment, a lot of people think about change and about what is happening in the world and how can we have a greater impact. And of course, as you see, my topic is very much to think about a more larger scale and also small scale. And I'm talking a little bit about water, water and environment and landscape and urban cities. And to think about this field, uh, just from a phenomena, it's very interesting how much you have to be flexible in scales. You have to be very precise and you have to think really big in large dimensions. And really to understand where our cities are and how, how the change is in scale and in time, it's very important to do research and also to see you know, what is, how is water moving, what is the inner structure, how is the shape of land, what is the shape of landscapes before our cities were built and before we actually were taking action in this, uh, in this world. And of course, it's the question, how is our infrastructure and our industrial sites and our cities organized? How, what, what is the function and the aesthetics? Well, I'm not a guy who is actually saying, you know, um, what we have done is all terrible. I think there are so beautiful architecture and buildings and there is a certain poesy in the way how we, how we interact with nature and also our culture is actually a very much this question, how do we interact? And, but still, the limits of our control are more and more ob obvious. It's flooding, it's disasters, we have too much, we have too little, uh, we have extreme problems all around the world, also here in Europe, and also here in our cities. But if we look around, we can see there is enormous impact needed. And when we look at some rivers, actually we see only shit, and we only see garbage, you know, and not water. Water is underneath of this river. So, you know, how to work in these situations, in formal and informal cities? And I'm very happy that Rahul also is here and will talk more about this question about how, what is our impact probably in places where we are, where our inf influence as, as engineers and architects is really not so strong. I'd just like to point out some, some ideas, some concepts where I'm starting to think where might be a way uh, to be totally radical different. I think one point is all our infrastructures are basically starting with investment, a technology which comes up, uh, an urban structure, and we have a post-process. At least with water, it's very much the case. And often we have done created scarcity situations, uh, like we invested often in one technology a lot, very depending. Uh, our cities were totally ignoring what is there, we can do everything with energy, with pumps, and so on. And we create basically waste and bring it out. And maybe sometimes we do a treatment trade. Uh, we, have a, we have a sewage treatment plant, but this is very little. I mean, in Europe there are a lot, but in, if you look around in the world, it's less than 15% often, or less than 10%, actually. The rest is just, just going out in the environment. So how can we do our impact better in the way how we create our cities. And I was just thinking, looking at cities, you know, modern cities today, they are totally often very much like a prestige, an image, a culture we follow up, which is like maybe a racing car. You know, everything is on one thing here, desalination. If everything fails, actually this whole thing collapses completely. So what about thinking completely different, maybe in the future we will have much less impact with money. We have to be much more careful how we use our resources also on financing things. Maybe our technology has to be much more simple as, as you described. Um, things which have to be sort of more adapted to something we can handle also in, the, in different parts of the world. Our cities have to be much more contextual in, in the patterns and they have to be changeable. They have to be flexible, I think, I believe. And finally, we have to think about what's the post-process, also on water. How can we recycle it? And also, how can we use it back in, in the way that we create value, and that we create value which comes back to this finance? We should not only rely on money, we should really think about values getting back and how to bring that. So, uh, just one, some points, a little bit where my research is or where I'm thinking 
first of all, also in our, in, in our uh, teamworks, we started to explore opportunities. You know, and we did all sorts of things. This is with Joachim Eplin, I think you were, uh, John Solar was also <laughs> very much, we had lots of discussions in, in some of these projects. Then we came up with crazy projects, you know, like the Paragon project for McLaren, which I'm not very proud of, but of course we tried to do uh, air conditioning systems there and use water and recycle the water and to get rid of the heat production of the, of the building out of that. Then the Potsdamer Plus project was for us such a, such a thing where we tried really to come up with new ideas of concepts to harvest the rainwater from the rooftop to have different types of, of, of material to store it in cisterns, to have a buffer cistern to bring it back. And then totally crazy things, this is something we did together. And we did stuck somehow also here because the problem is that this prestige and this image is hard to communicate uh, to make a sustainable project in such a country where you think about how can you reduce uh, and to make the right context of, for example, landscape, which can produce, which can rely on very, very little water. Because a lot of our clients have a culture where they expect this should be lush like uh, Singapore and we would like to have palm trees everywhere. So how to work on a different approach about the aesthetics of expectations? How is our correspondence with the client is a very big question. Well, second question, how to have chances to make things different, to improve maybe different ways how to work with water. Uh, and we did also a lot of this in our research from very small projects 1980 up to now on large scale to handle stormwater, for example, and rainwater in cities different and to integrate it, to bring it into the lifestyle of a place, to make it really pleasant, to bring lifestyle and technology together. And this goes also to a large extent also here in China in Tianjin. I think Dieter Grau, one of my partners, is probably in, in the hall. We just opened this project uh, some weeks ago. So where we collect the rainwater like Potsdamer Plush, but on a large scale to bring it back. So all these are sort of projects to make step by step to see where can we go. But somehow, to be honest, um, that's not enough. How can the outreach be bigger? And so we try to give a lot of conferences and talks and to encourage basically a shift of mindset also in politics. And I think this afternoon also people will talk about this. So the water sector is so important to be influential, uh, to bring out books, to publish new guidelines, to have public consultation and really lectures and to reach out. So not only projects, and to influence in a way that we go into the field to give new regulations here in Germany, in Switzerland, in Austria. We were very influential in this, but we still think it's not enough. We have not done enough in, in this way. At the moment, we have just experienced that in Singapore, we try to implement an idea for the entire island which we call the ABC Water Guidelines, which is a very strong uh, coordination between actually the three points what you just discussed, uh, the economy, the ecological side, and uh, the social side. How to bring that together with an interesting urban structure. As a case to say, well, we have to do our homework right in the town and not somewhere around. So if we do it right in our artificial world, um, and how can we do it so that the factory or the, or the organism of a city really can harvest their own water, recycle it, reuse it, and so on. A lot of experiments here, and to make it so that everyone, even a taxi driver in Singapore, knows what an ABC water guideline is and how it functions. Simple and clear, because it's the process to come away from that, that get rid of water in straight canals. So we try to go in a way to open it, to bring it into the park, to make it wider, and actually to in, in invest in a, in a system which is integrated, where park and recreation, and maybe sometimes stormwater where it, we have a floodplain comes together. A lot of discussion about security, as you can imagine, but I don't want to go on that topic. But still, I think how can we maximize, and this is a very strong belief what I have, we should come to something 
where we are responsible, even as pioneers, that we create something like a common sense. And the common sense is not just by experts. The common sense should be on the public, should be everyone, should be education, should be also interesting that people are excited and say, well, the world we live in is not experts, but we are part of it and we create this. So I think city dwellers and informal cities as well need to be informed, need to be involved in this process. And we have to learn this, especially in Germany or in, in, in European countries, where we often delegate everything by tax um, and by our system to someone who takes care. I think we have to bring that into our thing. And we have to also, I think, I believe very strong, we should not only encourage that change will be done by certifications like the LEED or others, uh, by rating systems and to encourage, because there the impact is only to get these credit points, but it's not about common sense. So I, I, I just like, you know, to bring that up because I know a lot of you are in this field, especially in, as engineers, we like to have figures, you know, to uh, sort of to improve or to calculate. But I think this, we, we should reach out much deeper. The impact should be so that we just feel uncomfortable if a city is not healthy, if lifestyle is not healthy. And this is, I don't know, I'm, I'm struggling with this, you know, how to, how to reach out for that. But I'm, I'm quite sure for next generations to come, uh, this is a very important point, and the outreach is probably also in public participation and integration. What we often have to deal with are totally disaster situations, polluted situations, like here in Jianjin and uh, Jianjiawo in this uh, situation when we started 2006. How to change that? And, and I'm thinking that our cities can improve also the water quality and the water cycle. We tried to do this on this project and it was very successful. This is the same project today. And what basically we try to do is to collect every drop of water, to treat it on site, to have a treatment train, to filter the water, to slow it down, to bring it finally into this treatment train, into the river, to have areas which are in between the buildings where we hold it back, where we have evaporation, where we reduce dust pollution, where we have cooling effects and many other things. And finally, where we have people and people who enjoy and play with it. And it should be place, uh, play, uh, playful. So what architecture is and engineering is, there was this wonderful debate about uh, aesthetics this, uh, this morning uh, versus uh, technology. I think both has to come together and we have to see really below that what is visual, that our uh, infrastructures and our technologies has a certain wisdom uh, with it. And that's important. So maybe to come to my, just have one more minute, um, what I think is needed, really public engagement in a different way than we did it before. We should empower the process, not only intellectual, but by emotions and by getting the spirit, the wisdom, and the emotions and the physical facts together. And I think networking is an extremely important point because we all need courage and we all need hope, even in our profession. And that's good that we have this conference, that we really can team up and talk to each other. And I, I thank Transfer very much for this opportunity that we have this party tonight and probably more discussions. I think also aesthetics is important because it has an outreach to our hearts and to our emotions. And that's where we can reach people. And of course, we need passion and courage and really intelligent leaderships. Good projects are not enough. We need strategic thinking how to bring that forward. And finally, this is more important than all the statistics and water quality to see people interacting finally again. So happy birthday, Transolar. Good luck for the future.